I'm Christine Bordelin. Let's get this group chat started. All right, so you've heard about poor people and what they eat during pregnancy. How about rich people and what they eat during pregnancy? Hey, I'm Grimes, and this is everything I eat in a day. Who's Grimes? A m- musical artist who is dating Elon Musk. Okay, okay. And I usually just like eat one of those and then go back to sleep, and then slowly the caffeine enters my system, and then I like wake up. Normally, I just don't eat all day and then eat one giant meal at dinner, but right now I'm like pregnant, so I obviously don't have that luxury. So I lately I've been waking up and I make this thing called butter toast, which is where I melt like a stick of butter <laughs> um, on a plate, and then I like put toast in and then turn the toast over and like, so the toast is completely saturated in butter. Um, and then I put a little bit of jam on it and eat that. <coughs> but it's, it's actually incredible. Like though this butter uh, technique is, um, yeah, it's, it's great. It's a yeah. huge waste of butter or anything. Yeah. yeah. I just like the fact that she's like, there's a thing called, like, she's so rich. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, there's a thing called butter toast. Yeah, we, we butter our toast all the time. Yeah. Like, that's not a thing. You melt a stick of butter. You're going to waste a whole stick? That whole yeah. stick thing is... As a Canadian comedian, I can't imagine taking little hotel butters and like putting them all (laughs) (laughs) that I saved from the road and brought to my apartment. She doesn't have to suffer (laughs) from tough butter. You know, when butter's cold still from the fridge and you have to like put it on the toast and it's in shaved peach. Yeah. Miles was confused when she said a plate. Yeah. So, what? 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 Yeah. What, are we what is this plate? <laughs> you like, don't have plates. And why are we bringing this? <laughs> yeah, no, not on the road. Not, not on, on the road. road. <laughs> not on the road. You take out your Dairy Queen napkin. <laughs> yes. Yes. You put the, the yeah. toast. That on is top. the plate that you put in the microwave. <laughs> if you have toast. <laughs> I'm really into this weird recipe I made called sludge. It's like you take couscous. You make the couscous. You take. <laughs> actually, I shouldn't say this because it's kind of gross. Say it. I want to know. You take like a ton of vegan A's and. Um, like a ton of sriracha and then just like cut up weirdly celery tastes really good in this tomatoes just sort of like take all the vegetables if you steam some spinach and you throw it all in and you just make this sludge like this couscous sludge that's like spicy and got vegan A's it's amazing isn't it like how rich people can just be like they're just children again like they just get to be four years old Just, just making little potions in the sink with all their weird bullshit, and like, there's just everyone accommodates them. Like, it's fine. Like, yeah. you, you don't get to experience. Like, when you're four years old, sort of, if you're lucky, your parents will just be like, "I guess he's a child." But like, now that they're rich, they just get to live the life of just being four years old again, just eating spaghetti every day. That's all I wanted to do. I, I wouldn't even let my nephew, who's five, do that. I'm like, spaghetti again? No, you need something else. And she's like, no, spaghetti, two years. My name is uh, Grimes now. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, you're yeah. using your imagination. That's amazing. What are you going to name your kid? Letters and numbers? <laughs> yeah, wow. Cool. But her, she had to change her name because her real name's Claire. <laughs> <laughs> what a devastating thing to be called Claire. I am not Claire. I'm Grimes. I, but to be honest, I would never buy a record from someone named Claire. Like, have you like have you heard Claire's new song? I'd be like, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know any famous Claire yeah, musician. I don't want to do that. Yeah, that is strange. It's not like a provocative name. Claire. Yeah. Man, oh, I hope there's brutal. no one named Claire yeah. watching this right yeah, now. It's a great wrecked. name. No one gets named it anymore, though. It's a great name to right. stay away yeah. from instruments or singing or whatever. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I yeah, Claire's Claire. like work in like accounting. Yeah. Yeah, like. Claire is Grimes accountant. (laughs) She's like, you spent a lot of money on spaghetti this year. So vaccinations have been a very contentious issue, um, but I think people are able to make light of them, as we'll see here. So you've decided you don't want to get vaccinated. Okay. You're a little skeptical because of things you've heard about the vaccine. We all get it. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to run down three possible scenarios of getting the vaccine and explain to you why those are actually more preferable. Number one, and the most likely scenario, you get the vaccine, it works, and you live. Well, that means you get to live. Number two, your dipshit aunt on Facebook was right and vaccines cause autism. 
Well, then, hey, you get to be autistic. I don't know if you ever met an autistic person, but they are a lot sweeter and a lot smarter than your ass is. Now, last and certainly the least likely scenario, you get the COVID-19 vaccination and you die. Well, now you get to see Jesus, don't you, you big old silly goose? Get the vaccine! Get it! Just get it! Get it! I love the argument of like not wanting to get the vaccine because uh, of the long-term effects. Like, no one knows the long-term effects of the vaccine. And it's like, okay, so you would rather like take a risk with the long-term effects of like a bat juice virus that's in your lungs? Like, you would rather find out what happens to your lungs after this virus that we basically know nothing about, or rather than just take the freaking vaccine that we all know works is fine. Like, it's so bizarre. Like, no one even knows. Like, COVID is insane, and doc- doctors are so freaked out about it. That's why, like, it, why? It's such an unknown. Like, why is the vaccine so weird to people? Uh, it's the same people that are like, wait, what's in this vaccine? Are the same people just getting cocaine from a random person? <laughs> yeah. and, you didn't ask what was in here. It could Tide. Tide is probably in there. You don't know how a watch works, but you still wear one and use it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, I don't know how anything works. Yeah. But I am constantly using things. Oh, also, my favorite, my favorite thing was uh, um, uh, there's so much misinformation. Oh, yeah. There's just so much misinformation about covid and the vaccines i'm like no there's not (laughs) there's misinformation by your friend greg on facebook not by the doctors and scientists well you just don't know who to listen to the doctors and scientists not the guy on facebook well i mean i just i just don't know okay well then i'm done talking to you are you guys double vaxxed yes yeah yeah Yeah. this is when we find out one of us is an (laughs) anti-vaxxer An anti vex <laughs> No, I'm not. <laughs> it is kind of, like it, I don't know. I should have looked at the camera. It. <laughs> are, you, are you double vex or just one? I have, I have both. You have both? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got mine really quick, like within the four weeks, because uh, I got one here when I was supposed to, and then I went to Alberta, and they were like, you, yeah, just come, come in. Come in, you might win a million dollars. Just please. We have so much in stock. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, but I'm from, I'm from Vancouver. I just got mine like three weeks ago. Yeah, that's fine. Is that safe? Is that safe? How yeah, you're supposed to do it for two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Uh, yeah. what, they recommend within four weeks. But I, like people here, we're getting them after like 12 weeks. Yeah. Because, you know, you have to get the people that need it the most. And then the, the elderly. And, like, and then you work your way down. And then <laughs> over there, there's like, just please. Just come in. There was, a, there was a 12-year-old girl that was getting her second shot. What? In front of me, yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is the best province in the world. <laughs> it was awful. They do actually have like really high vaccination rates for like a, a quarter of all age groups are fully vaccinated in Alberta, which is shocking. For being it being Alberta is what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a quarter? Yeah. A, yeah. It doesn't that's an Alberta sound 80%. good. But oh, like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> that's an Alberta 10. What? <laughs> yeah, an Alberta 10 for the women also. <laughs> oh, no. I beauty shamed. <laughs> I mean, it's also... I really that's set what, you up for that. that that's, was, the vaccine, that's the vaccine talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better do the gym. Do the gym quick. Yeah, yeah, do the like. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't know about you, but I love when people get mad. I personally find it very funny when it's not scary. And one of my favorite people to get mad is T Pain. Stop! Just f-ing do something else. Just god damn it! Do some different music. We have all this that you're doing. We already have it. Lil Uzi Bird is already doing it. Lil Baby is already doing it. The Baby is already doing it. It's literally two n****s with Baby in their names that's already doing all the music you want. And two with little. Do something <laughs> else. Little. Do something else. That's it. That's all we want. Do something else. Holy s***. Do something else. Holy s***. Stop sending me this bullshit and then get mad when I don't like it. Jesus, God damn tap dancing Christ. <laughs> Do 
something else. <laughs> I missed that part of the Bible. Did Jesus tap dance? <laughs> <laughs> he could do whatever he wanted. I grew up in Abbotsford. I know the Bible inside and out. <laughs> there, I missed that part. Maybe he could do it on the water, well, too. I was going to say, yeah. was that before or after or on the water? <laughs> Just tap dance and all of that. Yo, you are the son of God. <laughs> Randy, you were saying you agree with this? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Don't send T Pain stuff that he doesn't like. <laughs> you know? That's not original. <laughs> I've made that mistake before. <laughs> okay, can someone tell me who T Pain is? Oh my oh, god. Wow. I, like, I know T Pain, but I'm like, was he in a group or no, no he's just a T Pain guy? <laughs> he's just a no. T Pain guy. I'm sorry, I don't really listen to rap music. That's not rap. <laughs> Hip hop. <laughs> Hip hop is a genre. <laughs> And a lifestyle. Rap, <laughs> rap is one of the things in hip-hop. <laughs> oh, my God, Randy. Wow, this is your Grimes. Look at me. This is my Grimes. Look at me. I know who T-Pain is. Like, <laughs> I know who T-Pain is. T-Pain. He's about to uh, T-Pain. combine Tupac <laughs> and T-Pain. I don't know about you, but um, I love to eat to um, classical music. Uh, it makes me feel powerful. I'll like watch myself eating to classical music. Um, but, and a lot of other people are playing with classical music right now too. <laughs> like this. You will never listen to this song the same way Flawless. again. Thank you. <laughs> they're saying in the first place i thought you were italian i don't think that's italian, Is that not italian? <laughs> <laughs> but also i must admit i don't know the full lexicon of italian things <laughs> i think it was latin oh latin. latin so i used to sing in a choir and um <laughs> bragging <laughs> did you ever sing it happy or did you always sing it angry that particular piece? Yeah. Uh, I never, I've never sang that one, but it, a lot of the Latin masses and, uh, are, are the same text. They're, uh, and they're from, yeah, just stock uh, Latin text from the masses from the liturgical cycle of the Catholic Church. So it's all the same. Like you hear like Mozart's Requiem wouldn't have a lot of the same words as oh. that piece there. So it is like when I see that, I do hear the Latin because I've pr- sung so much like Latin Whoa, so stuff. are they actually it's like, saying those things? <laughs> yeah, they're not saying those things. But it's like, yeah. it might be only like 17 words. So it's really great because you don't have to memorize really anything. You Contrary to what you're hearing today, uh, Miles is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to the stand up. It's so hard because there's like part of my brain is like be funny and there's like the well actually part of my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just really just fighting it so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For <laughs> sure. like, actually, I know all the sailing knots. Has, has well actually... <laughs> Ever gone badly for you? Oh, yeah. Pardon me. Have you ever gone well, actually, and then it went really bad? Like, oh, it went sideways. Yeah, like just, just now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna subvert some of your expectations right now. This is a beautiful voice, but who's it coming from? There were nights when the wind was so calm that my body froze in bed if I just listened to it right outside the window. That is amazing. I went to a Lauren Hill concert. Uh, mm-hmm. She's a singer class rapper. <laughs> and uh, it was, was here she, in Vancouver. Is she like Grimes or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> She's like Grimes, but like eats a normal diet. Uh, I was here in Vancouver. Yeah. I saw the most white people I've ever seen with dreadlocks in my life. Mm. It was like every other person had dreadlocks. And I was like, this is crazy. Um, the opening act sounded exactly like Anthony Hamilton. Very deep. Is it bravado? Uh, baritone? Baritone yeah. voice. What's bravado? That's like a thing? Bravado is just is like an expression of, Thank of you. enthusiasm. So, <laughs> I'm coming to you for Google all the time. So, uh, so uh, this guy, very bravado guy, right? Has a baritone voice when he's singing. I'm yeah. like, this guy's great. And then he would stop and talk to the audience. Sounded exactly like Mike Tyson. It was the weirdest thing. When he sang, he was like so deep and like soulful. 
And then he would sound like a cartoon yeah. when he would talk. He's like, thank, and he had like a lisp. And he's like, thanks, everybody. Like, you could just see all the vaginas dry up. <laughs> right? Because they were like, oh, yeah. And then they're like, oh, no. Like, just stop. <laughs> he should just sing everything. It's like Adele. She's the same way. Oh, She's yeah? got like a pretty wild accent. Like, She's a chav. Chav. What does that mean? She's a chav. A ch- I lived in England, so like I know what a, I've seen a chav up in personal. Um, a chav is like uh, someone who wears like a tracksuit and they talk in a really like South London Cockney accent and they push a pram. They usually have. They're usually like a teenager with a baby or like this. No, this is a real no, thing. No, no, I'm sure. I've just never seen her with the pram, but I believe you. <laughs> I love to watch people fall down the stairs. Take a look at this one. So there's a challenge, oh, you walk wow. down the stairs, you skip a step with this uh, thingy, you gotta look at it. I'm not totally mad, you can't see it. <laughs> you see how like, the like, stairs are all messed up? I bet you that's what his leg looks like right now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so one time I had uh, those uh, um, drunk glasses in high school. What's that? Okay, so they, they uh, in high school they put, like, make you walk a straight line. And they put these glasses on you to simulate that you're drunk. Okay. And so it's just like that. You can't see. And then they'll be like, take them off. And now well, look, you know. Yeah. Don't, look at the mess don't, you made. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> I don't know what it was for. But I uh, aced it, right? And it's because I just closed my eyes and walked straight. Like, I was, seriously, I, I spun around. I did like a moonwalk. Teacher hated me. But like, wouldn't <laughs> you at the same time just do that? What, like, you know how to go down the stairs. Yeah, yeah, I've seen him do that when he's drunk. He just closes his eyes and just walks perfectly straight. <laughs> perfectly straight. <laughs> so I do that. that that's amazing, how I drink and drive. An amazing text. I know how to do this. Just <laughs> close your eyes. Just close your eyes. I have a Tesla. <laughs> Remember how Canada is a huge piece of shit in so many ways? Well, here's someone being funny about it. Oh, how cute. Ah, thank you. Are you done with it? Sorry? Are you finished with it? Am, am I finished with my baby? Yeah, can I have it? No. The, the fuck? No, you can't have my baby. You're not even doing anything with it. What do you mean? It's a, it's a, it's my child. You're not even using it, dude. Using it? It's, it's my, it's a person. It's my child. Wow, you don't even know how to use a baby? Hey, cop? What's up? I'm the cop. This mom just admitted that she doesn't even know how to use her own baby, dude. Huh. Is this true? What do you mean use a baby? It is a human. It is my child. And this strange man is trying to take it from me. So, it sounds like you don't know how to use it. It's my kid! Sir, how would you use this child? I would love, support, and nurture it unconditionally while instilling good morals and self-confidence to not only allow, but encourage its development and growth into a well-adjusted, well-rounded, healthy adult. That one sounds like the right answer. Thank you. Ma'am, hand over the baby. The only nun I would ever trust is Whoopi (laughs) Goldberg. (laughs) Yeah, white people. (laughs) What do you guys think of this? I'm sorry. <laughs> Just sitting there <laughs> listening to Grimes. <laughs> I wish the only thing the Catholic Church did was just just sing. Just sing in the church. That's it. Please, don't only sing But they fucked the singing up too because every time I was raised Roman Catholic and when I would go to church, every time I would go back after like a year or so, you know, on Christmas or whatever, they'd change the way, the tune mm. of the song that you thought you knew. So every time you go, you'd kind of know the words, but then there's like some psychological manipulation to make you feel bad about yourself that you don't know how to sing it. And uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of how they work. <laughs> Just a yeah, lot of T-Pain manipulation. Wants new stuff. Yeah, that's true. T-Pain yeah. wants new stuff. <laughs> you gotta change it up. <laughs> Can't sing the same stuff every time. <laughs> Was it the Catholic Church who chose to chop men's balls off so they sing high. Castrato's, no, I think he was probably like singing agencies of the time. Whoa, <laughs> there were bad agents even then? <laughs> yeah, even back then. They're like, listen, okay, I got a little trick. It's going to make a career last a little bit longer. Okay? Gonna, you know, gonna, your voice is going to get a little husky, so what we're going to do? We're going to cut your balls off. I know, it's no problem. We do it really fast. We'll ask your mom probably afterwards. We don't know, but I'm talking about a lot of Florians you're going to make. <laughs> You're going to make so many Ducats. Are these all? They're all, they're they're all, all from New York. Yes. They're, they're all Tony Soprano. Yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. all in Italy and Milan. Tony, we got another one. You just... Every time what a they voice. Hit, they hit but they did such a mob thing because they'd blame it on other cities, right? Like Italy's like, no, we don't do that here. It's bullshit. They do that in Paris. And Paris is just like, no, we don't cut these balls off. They do that uh, in Austria. <laughs> and the Viennese people were like, we don't cut these balls off. It's not, we don't do that here. 
Except and for it's just a German, circle. Your whole just a circle of lies. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag free Britney has been uh, such a powerful thing. Uh, but some people were there first before it was cool to support Britney as a human being. Uh, Craig Ferguson was one of them. I'm not doing that. Brent, listen, when she, the kind of weekend she had, she was checking in out of rehab, she was shaving her head, getting tattoos. That's what she was doing this weekend. This Sunday I was 15 years sober. So I looked at her weekend and I looked at my own weekend and I thought, you know, I, I'm, I'd rather have my weekend. But what she's going through reminds me of what I was doing. It's an anniversary, you start to think about it. It reminds me of where I was 15 years ago when I was living like that. Now, I'm not saying Britney Spears is an alcoholic. I, I don't know if she's an alcoholic or not. I, but she clearly needs help. I'm starting to feel uncomfortable about making fun of these people. And for me, comedy should have a certain amount of joy in it. It should be about, uh, about us attacking the powerful people, attacking the politicians and the, and the Trumps and the, and the blowhards of the world, going after them. We should be attacking the vulnerable people. And I think, I, I'm going to, this is totally a mea culpa, this is just for me. I think my aim's been off a bit recently. I, I, I want to change it a bit. So tonight, no Britney Spears jokes. Um, I think that Britney should be freed. Um, but I also think that she needs to chill on Instagram so they don't screenshot that shit. <laughs> He's in court. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Is she talking a lot on Instagram? Yeah, she got, she's posting a lot. Yeah. Oh. Have you not seen I have not seen. I've, I've been. I was sent some screenshots. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And I and then I read like an article about it and everything that went down. Mm -hmm. It's pretty wild that all that was happening. I had no idea. Yeah. What does she need to be freed from? She's under a conservatorship, fr with like her father and maybe her management company. Her father's using her as like a piggy bank, and mm. he doesn't want his piggy bank to disappear they're right, not right, letting right, her right, take right, right. her iud out and stuff there's some you know basic humanity things that are mm -hmm. pretty fucked up but now she's gonna hopefully get out of it and be able to do what she wants again i just think i, I think it's sad when when people are it's clearly that she was sort of manipulated by her dad and people around her from a really young age i think when people mm -hmm. are really young and they become that famous it like leads to mental issues and you see that a lot in, in hollywood um, but when I see, when, when someone is like already in their 20s and they come from a very wealthy family and they're seeking attention and fame and they just get annihilated, I'm just like, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, you, you fucking, you drove drunk. Right, <laughs> you right. You paid the price. <laughs> like, I, I don't have sympathy. They have a law, legal team. They go back, they cry, and they're enormous. Man. I have sympathy when they're kids and they're clearly exploited and they don't have the tools to deal with all that stuff. Like, it was clear that she was in that situation. There's a lot of it, that in Hollywood. I mean, yeah, you can see how that kind of fucks people up. They never had a chance. And, you know, obviously mental illness is, is not funny, and it's a real thing, but yeah. But when, if you're, like, 24, and your dad owns, like, a whole bunch of businesses, and you just want to go try and be an Instagram star or whatever, and you just get annihilated, I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> par for the course. I don't really have sympathy, but, you know, so I'm an asshole, Brittany so. <laughs> didn't have money growing that's, up. That's why yeah, she's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're saying. She's yeah. pro safe, Brittany. Oh, you're pro. Safe, pro. Brittany, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She was obviously exploited as, as yeah. from a young age too. Like kids. you're talking about, like the Paul brothers or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, like, yeah. Paris, or Paris Hilton. Right? Paris Hilton. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's like people who are yeah, they were seeking that attention. But Brittany and Lindsay Lohan, you know, free them both. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. up with Lindsay Lohan? Well, I'm just saying, she's also crazy. She was a child star. I mean, that really <laughs> messed star. him yeah. up. Yeah. 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 It's, that's oh, Aaron yeah. Carter, man. Free that guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? Free him. Aaron Carter. Him. Aaron Carter, bro. He once put his like phone number up on Twitter and I tried to call it. <laughs> <laughs> what did, it, did it go through? No, it, it, I'm sure his someone his stopped got, yeah, it by then. No, but. no, I think it's just you know he just doesn't have the money money to pay that phone bill. He got disconnected <laughs> yeah. for sure. But uh, Lindsay Lohan's making a comeback soon. Oh, is she? Yeah, I read that. <laughs> in what form? <laughs> like uh, she's going to be in movies again. Oh. Uh, the the just sorry because let's stick with Aaron Carter. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's a documentary that I watched, the um, the one about uh, NSYNC, and uh, okay. what's his name? Uh, that guy that took advantage of them? The yeah. manager? Oh, what? I yeah. can't remember his name, but yeah, yeah but I've yeah. heard about this. And Aaron Carter, uh, he, was, he was also his manager, and he's in the documentary defending him. Like, he has total, like, Stockholm Syndrome sort of thing, because of, of course, all, like, everything that happened in his childhood. <laughs> and all he said, which I thought was like, I was like, oh, okay. Like, he needs yeah. counseling, for sure. Yeah. Because he's like, 
He's like, he would never do that. He taught me how to do a diamond push-up. And that was it. Like, that was a clip. <laughs> he taught me how to he do, taught me how to do that. You think he would take my money? That's the closest thing I've ever had to a dad. <laughs> yeah. 100%. This is one of my favorite old videos. Some of you might have seen it before. But we wanted to end on a song. So here it is. I actually love this song. I didn't know this was happening. <laughs> Check out this new sound. Yeah, man. This is different. <laughs> this is different. I love her style. Yeah. <laughs> she cares, but she also doesn't give a shit. Yeah. How is there no one in the background? <laughs> yeah. They must have that blocked up. <laughs> Police presence. Oh, okay, a little Harlem uh, Shake. Uh, all right. <laughs> hey. What would you all, like, do you have something that you would write a song in dedication to mm. that you love so much mm. you would write a song about it? I'm assuming it's not Vancouver. Okay, what's yours first? What's mine first? Oh, man. Um, mine would be, I love, uh, well, I love when people fall, but um, I think that would be cruel. So yeah. I'm going to say bubble tea. Oh. I'd probably make a song about bubble tea. It's so good. You can get a soy version. It's writing itself. It's not going to be an interesting <laughs> song, but it's going to mean something to me. Yeah. What about you, Miles? I'm going to go home after this and write a whole musical called Tab Dance and Jesus. Um, <laughs> two and a half hours long. Yeah, it's, uh, do you, do you want to play Jesus, Sonny? I mean, can you, can, can you tap dance? I do, but the thing is, I want to watch it more than I want to be in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you got one ticket sold already. Maybe you All could right. direct. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm in. You can direct? I'm All in. right, sounds good. I have my people call your people. <laughs> She's my person. I'm, I'm now do his you want agent. Be a part of it? You can <laughs> be in the musical as well. You, you taught me how to do a diamond push up. <laughs> <laughs> can someone and I'm teach so proud. me? Yes. Teach you how to tap dance? Thank you to do a diamond push up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got, I'll get Lou on the phone. <laughs> yeah. uh, watch, I, I would do a, a, a song about corn. Corn. I think, yeah. It's in a lot of stuff. I, I love corn anyway. Like, corn is this much lower in importance in my life than my mother's health. <laughs> like, if my mom got sick, I'd be bummed, but give me a bowl of corn. I think I'll make it through. A bowl of corn. Any corn. Give, hmm. give me corn. What? Anyway. Are we talking popped or cooked or like on the cob? Uh, popcorn, I think, is like a, a different animal in itself, but yeah. like literally anything. I'll take it on the, I'll take it on the cob. I'll take it in corn soup. I'll take it at just the kernels. Anything. I love corn. That's great. It's insane. It's insane how much I what love. What about it. creamed? Give it to me. Mm-mm. Wow. Mm-mm. Give it to me. You heard it here first. So you're just like corn. shitting out corn. <laughs> <laughs> That's the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You see, I see the corn come out when you do that. I'm like, man, I do shit out a lot of corn. (laughs) (laughs) Sonny, Sonny, I'm sorry to tell you. Corn and beets, man. (laughs) My place is a nightmare. (laughs) I'm sorry to tell you something about that. I don't have corn all the time. I just enjoy it. It's like cotton candy. It's like a nice treat, but you know. There's already a a whole band called Corn, and every song they do is about corn. (laughs) I I know about corn. (laughs) Don't worry about it. But no, they don't talk about corn. They I don't was, do I was led corn? astray. Well, they really. I bought their album because of that. They really missed. They really yeah, they missed, missed an, an opportunity, opportunity right there for one yeah, album. Sales. Just doing the whole Midwest tour. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Randy? What's your? So what you it's something about? I love. <laughs> I would say something that you feel passionate about, like corn. <laughs> <laughs> um, the TV show Succession, probably. Oh, that would. So, are we talking? Like, is this like a moody song? Um, or pop? I really don't know music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. So is it a song that goes fast or goes slow? Ooh, um, slow. Oh, hell yeah. A bit of a jam. Yeah, I like that this. Ballad, you yeah. Know? <laughs> Heck yeah. I mean, you've already seen an artist perform today. There's a possibility you could get her for the song. That's true. She had, you know, interest. I think she might. <laughs> skills. Judging by how old that video is, I think she might have died. For sure. Yeah, there's a possibility. Oh, no. Yeah, 100%. She likes Vancouver too much. She wasn't wearing a mask. It's over yeah, for her. Yeah, she it's definitely cool. looked like an anti mask. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I hope she just died here. I hope she didn't die on vacation or something like that. She died oh. where she loves to be. <laughs> yeah. In Vancouver. <laughs> in her big fur coat. I'm Christine Bordelin, and thank you for joining our group chat. Bye.